what is healthy breathing and what is unhealthy breathing. And the first place we wanna tackle this is within the context of sleep. So when we go to sleep at night, we continue to breathe. That's no surprise. If we didn't, we would die during sleep. However, there is a large fraction of the population that under breathes during sleep. They're not taking deep enough or frequent enough breaths. And therefore they are experiencing what's called sleep apnea. They are becoming hypoxic, hypoxic. There's less oxygen being brought into their system than is necessary. People that are carrying excess weight, either fat weight or muscle weight or both are more prone to nighttime sleep apnea. However, there are a lot of people who are not overweight who also experience sleep apnea. How do you know if you're experiencing sleep apnea? Well, first of all, excessive daytime sleepiness and excessive daytime anxiety combined with daytime sleepiness is one sign that you might be suffering from sleep apnea. The other thing is if you happen to snore, it's very likely that you are experiencing sleep apnea. And I should mention that sleep apnea is a very serious health concern. It greatly increases the probability of a cardiovascular event, heart attack, stroke. It is a precursor or sometimes the direct cause of sexual dysfunction in males and females, cognitive dysfunction during the daytime. It can exacerbate the effects of dementia, whether or not it's age-related dementia of the normal sort or Alzheimer's type dementia, which is an acceleration of age-related cognitive decline. If you're somebody who's had a traumatic brain injury, if you're experiencing a lot of stress, sleep apnea is going to greatly disrupt the amount of oxygen brought into your brain and body during sleep and is going to lead to a number of nighttime and daytime issues. So it's something that really needs to be addressed. And we'll get into this a bit more later, but since I raised it as a problem, I do want to raise the solution. One of the major treatments for sleep apnea is that people will get a CPAP device, which is this um, face mask and a machine that they'll sleep with. And while those can be very effective, not everyone needs a CPAP. One of the more common methods nowadays that's being used to treat sleep apnea, which is purely behavioral and intervention and is essentially zero cost is that people are starting to shift deliberately to nasal breathing during sleep because of the additional resistance of nasal breathing. And because of the fact that there's far less tendency, if any, if any, excuse me, to snore when nasal breathing, taping the mouth shut using medical tape prior to sleep, excuse me, putting medical tape on the mouth prior to going to sleep and then sleeping all night with medical tape on the mouth is one way that people can learn to nasal breathe during sleep and can greatly offset a lot of sleep apnea, snoring and sleep related issues. A number of people don't want to or don't feel safe putting medical tape on their mouth prior to sleep. For some reason, they think they're gonna suffocate, but of course you would wake up if you started to run out of air um, at any moment. So that's not so much a concern. But what they'll do is they will start to use pure nasal breathing during any type of exercise or even just for some period of time walking during the day or while working. And again, later we'll get into the enormous benefits of shifting to pure nasal breathing when not exercising hard, meaning at a rate that you could normally hold a conversation, although if you're pure nasal breathing, you won't be holding that conversation, or when simply doing work or um, any number of things that are sort of low intensity, you can train your system to become a better nasal breather during the daytime through these deliberate actions of taping the mouth shut or just being conscious of keeping your mouth shut. And that in addition to having a number of positive health and aesthetic effects during the daytime, is known to also transfer to nighttime breathing patterns and allow people to become nasal breathers as opposed to mouth breathers during sleep and to snore less and to have less sleep apnea. Again, if you have severe sleep apnea, you probably do need to check out a, a, sleep, a CPAP. You should talk to your physician. But for people who have minor sleep apnea or sleep apnea that's starting to take hold, uh, these other methods of shifting to becoming a nasal breather are going to be far more beneficial and far more cost effective than going all the way to the CPAP, which by the way, doesn't really teach you how to breathe properly as much as it does adjust the airflow going into your system. That's an important point that when you shift from mouth to nasal breathing during sleep, you're actually learning and training your system to breathe properly.